Hey guys, this is Lori Poole with the Glamour edition of Shutter Magazine. For this month's article, I talked to you about ways that you can tweak your boudoir posing to really bring those poses up to the next level. Now for this month's bonus content, I want to share with you the top three selling poses in our studio from the past year. So what I did is I went into Lightroom and found all of the images that clients had actually purchased. Not just the ones that I photographed, but the ones that they ended up buying in some form of product or another. And I took those images, sorted them by pose, and figured out which poses were actually selling the most from all the images I photographed in the past year. So here they are, the top three images from Indigo Silver Studio from the past year. Hope you enjoy. Okay guys, here we are in Lightroom with our first pose. So this pose here I call In the Window. Now if we go through what we talked about in the article where we talk about that you need to come up with a concept, figure out something to do with the legs, the arms, and so forth, we can deconstruct this pose to see how it's working. So the concept of this pose is that she's standing, we're showing off curves, we're using light to contour the body, and we may get in a little closer to get a nice headshot. Okay, now with the legs, we have the back leg straight, and we have the front leg bent here, which gives that nice round curve. Also, we're pushing the hips away from the camera. The arms in this particular photo, we've got one in her hair and the other one down, but as you'll see in some of the other photos, the arms do change a bit. One thing that generally doesn't change is I am trying to keep this front arm away from the body, which keeps the arm slim since it is the closest thing to the body in this photo, and it also brings it away from her waist to create a nice little gap for the waistline here. Now, uh, the next step was arching. So yes, she is obviously arching. You can see that her chest is lifted outward, her hips are pushed back, and her head is following that general curve as well. Her head is turned hard towards the light. So it's hard to tell from this photo because we do a good job of making this pose look natural, but her head is really actually turned much more than what she would feel is natural. But in so turning her head, we're getting all of this nice light coming from our light source here to chisel out her facial features and give kind of that beauty shot. The other thing that we're doing though is we're working with turning the body away from the light so that we get a nice pattern of highlight and shadow across the body. So in this particular image here, you can see how we're carving out the cleavage by creating that little shadow. Um, she's obviously quite thin, but for other clients, this would help by throwing the tummy into shadow that would hide some issues there. Um, obviously, she doesn't have that issue. But why this pose works, it's interesting to me that um, the most popular pose I sell in my, in my studio is actually based on a classic portraiture pose. This is the classic S-curve, guys. So we have the hips pushed away from the camera, we have the legs bent, the back arched, her body turned away from the camera, the face towards in. This is all classical portraiture. There's nothing new about what this pose is doing. Okay, so let's look at some variations on this image. I've got some pulled up into Lightroom here. So I'm just gonna kind of flip through some images here and allow you to see the same thing and yet slightly different for each client. So we're still always keeping that back foot, um, back leg straight because she's pushing her hips away from the camera, the front leg is bent, arms are pulled away from the waist, and then sometimes we give the hands something else to do. In this one here, we did rotate her a little more so her back's not fully to the light, and that was very intentional, again, to create this highlight and shadow that helps show off all of the hard work that this woman has done in the gym. But as always, you know, we're giving the hands something to do. We're turning the face in toward the light. So you can see some different variations on how we're doing that. Now, the most popular crop is what I've been showing you, kind of this three, four, three quarter crop. But as you'll see, we can actually do some different variations. We can go a little bit wider. We can go full body. And we can also get in tighter. You can use some different details here, focus on you know, amazing body parts if they have something that they want to show off. But we can also get in a little tighter for a nice headshot, show some different expressions, show off the makeup. Um, most women who are having boudoir done are really excited about their makeover and they do want some images that show the makeup. 
All right, so our next pose I call the reclining goddess. This one actually really surprised me that it was such a popular pose because I don't really think much of it while I'm doing it as far as like this is going to be the one that she's excited about. But let's deconstruct the pose here. Okay, so the concept is that she's reclining. We want it to look natural, but we also want to create curves at the same time. I will tell you there is nothing natural or comfortable about this pose. We actually work really hard to make an uncomfortable pose look quite comfortable. So let's deconstruct. She is completely turned onto her hip. She is not sitting on her bum and her bottom leg is totally out straight. But we've also worked her way up into the arm of the chair here. So really her body is almost at a right angle from the side. So this really does create a bit of a stretching feeling along the hip right here. So it's really not comfortable to leave your client in this pose for too long, but we do get great results out of it. Now, continuing on with the legs, we've got the bottom leg straight. So we get that nice elongation that we talked about in the article, but we're letting this leg kind of drape over the other to help create some curves, right? The toes are pointed so that her, her legs do get, you know, that extra six inches of extension, just like we talked about. Now with the arms, pretty much almost always this arm is going to be here on the armrest. This other arm here will come up with some different things to do. When I'm voting, photographing this from straight on, I do like to have it kind of down here across the midsection because for a lot of women being bent over in this way um, might actually make their tummy look rounder than it really is. So the arm helps do a little bit of blocking here, but it also creates this nice kind of like indent here at the waist so that, that we're, we're maintaining that um, hourglass shape, okay? Now, um, she is arching, her chest is lifted. We're keeping that posture really nice and straight so that she doesn't just sink down into the corner of the couch here. The head is generally turned towards the main light source. So the main light source is over here. We've got a little kicker down here to kind of highlight the legs, um, but her head is again turned towards that main light source so that we get that uh, short lighting. The expression on these can vary. Obviously you can go from, you know, serious to smiling and then we can get some different variations. So where I start is always with the full length shot from straight on as you can see here, but this same image can be photographed in different ways. So without moving her hardly at all, sometimes we'll move the arms a little bit, but without a whole lot of movement, we can go from here to tighter to now circling around the couch over to another angle. Now this angle here tends to be what makes this pose so popular in my studio. As you'll see, I'll flip through a, a variety of different images here, again, going with the full length, getting in a little tighter. Here we gave that other arm something to do to show off her tiny little waist, but then we start getting into those closer shots. Um, shots like this work for pretty much every body type because from this angle, you really can hide a lot of problem areas. You can also work to really show off curves. Um, they love seeing their legs just kind of fall out of focus in the background. And of course, it's very popular for boudoir, again, to have those makeup shots, showing off the eyelashes, showing off the jewelry. So you'll see that that is kind of a common thread in all of these different angles here. Now, the other thing that you can do within this pose is you can shoot a variety of expressions, right? So we can go from smiling to serious. Um, so that does help add to the popularity of this pose and that you can get those different expressions in this angle and it shows them off nicely. You can also go even tighter. So if you do want to focus in on some more details, you can get even tighter on those lashes and lips. And that again, makes this very, very popular. Notice again, we have the body turned away from the main light so that we're creating all of this nice shadow detail and really contouring her. Um, we have the face turned toward the light so that we get this nice little short loop pattern and we're getting um, some chiseling here on the cheekbones. So again, tends to be a really popular shot. So those first two poses, the in the window pose and the reclining goddess pose are tied for first with the most popular pose that I sell here at the studio. Our next pose um, came in third place with only just two fewer images sold in the past year. So it was a really tight race between all of these. But the next pose is just your basic laying down pose. 
So this one encompasses all of the things that we talked about in the article. So the concept is that the client's laying down. Um, pretty much everybody looks good laying down. It flattens out the tummy. You can show off curves. You can show off legs. We can do a variety of things. But what? let's deconstruct it a little further. So both legs are bent, but in the majority of these, you'll see that this front leg here is extended a little more than the back leg. For one thing, that breaks up the legs to have them be at slightly different angles, but by having the front one be extended out a little further, that elongates her more than if it was the shortest leg. Hopefully that makes sense. Now, um, again, we have the toes pointed. This particular client has heels on, but you'll see some that are barefoot. We're gonna do the same thing either way in extending out those toes. With the arms, the arms here can vary. Um, again, just like we talked about in the article, we're giving them something to do. So she's got this arm is kind of hugging across her body, um, which does help enhance the bust line a little bit. This arm here is running through her hair, but you'll see different options. You'll see them pulling on their underwear, tugging on a bra strap, their hands in their hair, hands on their legs. Hands are always doing something different, but give them a job, right? We don't want them just laying there. All right, now again, she is arching. So not as obvious in this pose because she is laying down, but her chest is lifted. Her booty is pushed into the bed. And so we're arching the spine right here to give a little bit more shape. With her head, we have her chin actually up and it looks quite natural in this photo. So you may not realize that her chin is up, but when you're laying down and you lift your chest, your chin is naturally going to tuck in. So we have to work against that and keep her chin up. So I tell them just to keep pointing it up, 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 up toward the ceiling until we get to an angle that we like. So for one thing that is elongating the neck, we're avoiding any sort of double chin kind of thing that might happen. But the other thing that we're doing is we're bringing the face up toward the light source so that we get this nice kiss of light on her cheekbones, on her forehead, along the bridge of her nose, on her lips, etc. So we're getting the same quality of light on her face that we are on the rest of her body. If her chin were tucked, then the majority of her face would be in shadow. Expression again can vary. Um, my favorite expression that you'll see in here often is just eyes down, lips parted. It's very soft and sensual and not overly forced. But again, you can do this with, um, you know, smiling, you know, very different variations on the expression. So let's look through some different varieties of these. So same basic concept, um, back arched, legs bent, hands are doing something different than in the last pose, but the chin is still lifted. So we're doing all the same things that we talked about here. Same basic concept, a little bit different variation on the hands. Here we can see with no shoes on, but we are still pointing the toes to keep those legs nice and long. Same concept, shot from a little bit of a lower angle. Same concept again. So you can see how this can be a really popular pose. Now for variations, we can start circling around and shoot at more of a diagonal, right? So same basic pose happening here, but shooting more at a diagonal until we get around towards the head. Now I did address this in the article as well, but when you are shooting from the direction of the client's head, it is even more important that you really get that chin up. So her chin is way, way, way up in a way that doesn't feel natural, but you just gotta keep encouraging your client of like, bring it up, 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 up even more until you from where you are standing can actually see most of their face. Otherwise, again, if her chin were tucked, we'd mostly just be seeing the top of her hair and we'd be seeing sort of like an odd nose sticking out, but not really much of the face. So we really wanna bring the chin way, way up. Now, all the same things are still happening. Chest is lifted, booty is pushed back, legs are bent. You know, we're still doing all the same things that we talk about in those other poses. We've just circled around to another angle. So you'll see some variations on this as well. These are all that same basic pose, just shot from tight to middle to wide, varying angles from down low to up high, um, from full length to tighter in, from the side all the way around towards up towards their head. Same pose, but on a couch. You get the idea. You can circle around even further and get more of a broad lit pose, which I think in this particular image works. Doesn't work for everybody. You can get up on a ladder and shoot down, but it's still the same basic pose. You can have them out on a tree in a river. <laughs> 
<laughs> um, so you can use this same basic pose over and over again, extending the arch even a little bit more in these last two images here. What, how we get them to do this kind of arch is you actually get them to where they're resting all the weight on the top of their head. Again, really uncomfortable pose to hold for very long, but you can see that it is that same basic pose that we've been talking about. You can also use this pose to focus in on interesting details. So we do a lot of bridal boudoir. We like to focus in on the rings and the veil, um, make sure we capture those details that are important to them. All right, so that was our last pose. Okay guys, those were the top three selling poses from Indigo Silver Studio from the past year. I hope you enjoyed them and hope it gave you some ideas. Um, I was actually surprised to find out that some of the top poses that my clients were choosing weren't necessarily my favorites, but ones that my clients felt were perhaps a little safer or a little prettier. Um, so I definitely learned something in this process as well. Now, if you are interested in learning more about boudoir, I highly recommend that you check out Shutterfest in 2020. It's going to be in St. Louis in April. And Shutterfest is an amazing photography convention, but at Shutterfest, there are going to be 16 boudoir specific classes from 12 of the country's top boudoir photographers and educators. So it's a great way to go and learn more about this exciting genre. Classes are gonna be a mix of hands-on, lecture, and live demo. So get yourself to Shutterfest in St. Louis in April. Hope to see you there. Bye guys.